Studies have shown that teen sex is the most searched form of sex on the internet. But this is not surprising because the age at which you find other people attractive does not change. Instead it expands. When we are young, we find children of our own age attractive. But as we grow older, children under the age of 18 do not become less attractive. But pedophiles also find children under the age of 18 attractive. So what is the difference between you and pedophiles? More details about the Canadian man who's now at the heart of a global manhunt, including who he is, his alleged crimes, and how he spent his time half a world away. A New York congressman says Michael Jackson was a pedophile who doesn't deserve all the attention he's getting. En uitgerekend de bischop van deze kerkprovincie moest aftreden, omdat hij jarenlang zijn neefje seksueel heeft misbruikt. When is it considered pedophilia? Under the age of 16, 14, 12? I think somebody is a pedophile when he's attracted to somebody who's under 18. The billionaire Prime Minister faces trial on charges of paying for sex with Ruby when she was just 17. It's a, a diseased, uh, psychotic uh, person. It's not even a human being. I don't think it's a human being. When an adult has sex with a child, it's called, st it's called statutory rape. It's, not, was it's not, not called anything charged. else but rape. Pedophiles are men older than 30 who abuse our children. Online, he calls himself Man Bay 2004. He makes a date for sex with a girl he believes to be 13. Makes it sound like you would do that with a 13-year-old. No, I wouldn't. I, uh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to her. Only, only unless if, if you know, if she was 18 or you know. Pedophile is somebody who's older than 21 and who feels attracted to somebody who's younger than 15. I think somebody who's 21 goes with somebody who's 15 or 16, it's uh, not the best thing, but if somebody's 30 and he goes with somebody's 15, I think it's wrong. It is time now for another chapter in the tawdry tale titled, The Pope and the Pedophile Priests. Somebody who just likes children. A pedophile is an older man. Disgusting. It's an illness. Pervert. Something like priests. Mentally ill. Criminal. Psycho. Insane. Crazy. There is no standard definition for pedophilia because the world cannot agree on one definition. The most confusing factor is the major difference in the legal age of consent. The minimum age at which a person is considered legal for sexual acts varies from 9 years to 20 years. Some countries, such as Saudi Arabia and Umam, do not even have a legal age of consent. But to fully understand this, we need to go back to the beginning. We need to go back in time to the Stone Age. Life was not easy in the Stone Age. Due to the harsh environments in the Paleolithic era, men and women did not live long. The average lifespan for the first modern humans was 33. In fact, in the Neolithic era, between the Stone Age and the Bronze Age, the average life expectancy for the first modern humans was as low as 20 years. This meant that early modern humans did not have the luxury to postpone having babies like we have today. Even though the life expectancy of humans has doubled since the Stone Age, natural selection favors early reproduction because it is not logical for humans to delay maturity. Young females usually reach sexual maturity at age 16, and up to this very day, this biological process on average has not been delayed. Anthropological studies conducted by Napoleon Chagnon on primitive societies suggest that the average man finds females around the age of 16 sexually the most attractive. 
Males have an instinctive attraction towards females who are at the earlier stages of sexual maturity. From an evolutionary standpoint, this makes perfect sense. A male who can gain access to young virgin females can maximize his own reproductive potential. Males who evolved an attraction to young females who were not already pregnant would have more offspring than other male competitors. There has always been a biological preference towards pubescent children and young adults, and as time progressed, certain societies would take this to the extreme. The word pedophilia is composed of two Greek words. On the one hand, pais, which means child or generally youthful person, dependent person even, and philia, which means love, closeness, uh, being one's own. So generally you could say it is the love of children or a child. The Greeks and Romans practice pederasty. And that means that there was an erotic relationship between an adolescent boy and an older man. Pederasty did not only occur between men and boys. It was also well known between women and girls. Nonetheless, I think we can safely say that most people associate with pederasty the relationship between older men and boys. Pederasty was not just widely practiced, it was also widely recognized, in particular in ancient Greece, as a very normal and even commendable social institution. It was not odd, it was not wrong, it was something that was part of social life more broadly. Pederasty has existed in many cultures. The ancient Greek case is, I think, the best known, but nonetheless, it was practiced and normal in many other cultures too. For instance, in the Middle East and Asia. If you look at the church in the Middle Ages, if you look at its view on sexuality, that was quite conservative. It hadn't always been that way from the beginning. Considering the practice of uh, celibacy, that wasn't there when the church started. Popes, priests, they had their wives, they had their children. It's only when celibacy was introduced in the Middle Ages that it sparked an immense increase of homosexuality in the church. Catholic priests who molested adolescent boys were not homosexual by nature. But, as you know, place any man in an environment that is deprived of women and what will happen, you will most likely see homosexual activity. Priests, right? They are spiritual, yes, but they are human as well. And as humans, they are sexual beings. Studies even have shown that the sexual abuse of children is not limited to the Catholic Church. Other churches and religions are just as likely to abuse children. The majority of priests who abuse children cannot be diagnosed with true pedophilia. Rather, their actions involve habophilia. Habophilia is defined as an attraction towards adolescent children. In technical terms, they are called offending habophiles. If sex that involves adolescent children is a moral issue, then why is it common in religion? Various religions contain sexual activities with children. Christianity, Islam and Judaism are no exception. Mary was at the age of 12 or 15 when she got her baby, Jesus Christ. Uh, Aisha was uh, married with the prophet uh, at 6 and consummated the marriage at 9. Furthermore, 
Bar Mitzvah is when Jewish boys turn 13 and are seen as men. Jewish girls have Bat Mitzvah. When they turn 12, they are seen as women. Looking back in history, one can see a sexual pattern. The average age of pregnancy was 13, and only in recent years has that age gone up, especially in Western society. Currently in Western society, the average age of pregnancy is between 21 and 23. Okay, overall you can, you can see that uh, girls start uh, their puberty around age 10 and uh, finish uh, around age 16. Uh, boys, they start their puberty somewhat later and uh, consequently also finish their puberty somewhat later. Western society has chosen 18 as the legal age at which we become adults. Despite the fact that women usually reach maturity at age 16, the legal age for Western society is 18. This was an obvious choice because at 18, men reach maturity. To fully understand this choice, we must understand the evolutionary differences between men and women. Women have many requirements for their ideal man. One of the most valued requirements is that their ideal man is tall. This is not a superficial choice. Instead, this is actually a logical and instinctive decision. Back in the Stone Age, a simple law applied, survival of the fittest. This meant that only the strongest humans survived. Women preferred men who were big and tall. Larger men could provide more food and better protection than smaller, weaker men. Natural selection favored bigger men. That is why most men are taller than women. But this extended growth came at a price. In order to become taller than women, men needed two years extra to grow taller. The extra energy put into growing also affected men's mental growth. Instead of becoming physically mature at age 16, men are physically mature at age 18 and are also later in their mental maturity. Today, if you compare 16-year-old girls to boys, you will realize that 16-year-old girls are sexually and mentally far more mature than 16-year-old boys. Girls even start puberty earlier than boys and therefore usually have sex earlier. That is why girls are more likely to want older partners. Growing up they realize that boys their own age lag behind in maturity and keep this mindset. That is why the average woman is younger than a male partner. Biologically, humans start experimenting with sexual intercourse in puberty. This usually begins around the age of 13. However, Western society has pushed the legal age of sexual maturity several years beyond the physical age of sexual maturity and regard sex normal when humans reach the legal age of 18. This choice is not based on morals. Instead, this choice is mainly based on education. Western society is fortunate enough to offer most children an education. High school education usually ends at 18. That is why Western society does not favor underage sex because it interferes with education. Due to the increased education, the age of pregnancy has risen in recent years. Being a mom is hard at any age, believe me, I know. But imagine being a mom twice before the age of 19. A new study says that's the story for one in five teenage girls in America. I think I was 12 when I first started thinking about sex. More shocking still, fully half of girls between 14 and 19 say they've had sex. I guess when I was 11 or 12, I was starting to think about sex, you know. Parents out there, there's a worrisome trend we need to tell you about. More than 20% of teenagers admit to sending naked photos of themselves to other teens. I was around 11 when I started thinking about sex. 
Uh, and teens and preteens are engaging in sexual behavior at much earlier ages. Uh, between the age of five and seven years. I was seven years old. The age of uh, eight. I was eight or nine years old. At the age of 11. At the age of 11, about 12, 13 years. I was 11 or 12 when I first started thinking about sex. Well, I guess all the, you know, everybody gasps when they hear the 13 year olds say they're having sex or the 12 year olds. But I, I guess we have removed ourselves from what the world was like when we were coming up. At age 16, most girls are physically mature. However, that does not mean that they're mentally ready to have sex. And of course, all sex should be consensual. Child sexuality is very prominent in Western media. The age of 16 is embedded in our society because at that age, every man knows that females are sexually mature. We do not need biology to tell us that 16-year-olds are portrayed in the media as sexual beings. Just look at MTV, 16 and Pregnant, Teen Moms, or My Super Sweet 16, or the fact that the average age of a fashion model is 16. Western society considers this behavior normal. If a girl wants to start her high fashion modeling career at age 19, I think it's a little bit too old for most modeling agencies. However, not every culture has adopted the Western views on child sexuality. Traditional cultures, which have had very little contact with Western ideology, still marry and bear children in early puberty. There are also many modern societies that differ from the West. In Japanese society, the attraction to young teenage girls is a widespread cultural phenomenon. The term lolicon describes an attraction to underage girls or individuals with such an attraction. Lolicon is very popular in Japanese media and fashion. Outside Japan, lolicon mainly refers to a genre of Japanese comics and animations that depict girls sexually. What makes Lolicon so controversial are the art forms, anime and manga. Lolicon art has no actual age, just like the Disney characters Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. Nobody knows their real age. The attraction to children can be found in many societies, but there is a limit. There is no society in the world that encourages sex with children before puberty. My abuse started when I was about five by my father. He was never nice. I have pictures of me as a baby and him holding me and I'm screaming. I knew. I knew then that he wasn't very nice. I can remember the first time that I remember him ever touching me. He had me in his bed with him and I thought he was sleeping. He just reached over and started touching my chest. I was shocked and made the excuse for him that it was okay, that he just must have thought that I was my mom. But now I think about that and I think why would that be my first thought and not please stop or leave me alone. I laid there until he was done and left his bed and went into my own room. But soon touching wasn't enough and he moved on to oral sex. At the time my parents had a water bed and he would straddle my little neck and make me do these awful adult things and I couldn't understand. He'd kick me out of bed and tell me that I better not get sick and I better not make a mess on the carpet. In the same year, those things still were not enough and he moved on to actually raping me. I can remember waking up with him on top of on top of me and my legs were asleep and my hips hurt and he was making me hold his cross necklace so that it didn't make any noise. All these things happen almost every night. I got a break every now and then when my grandmother came into town or he went out of town for business. My life was doing all these things that my father wanted. I became great at hiding and learning how to cover things up. I can remember sneaking the bloody underwear to the trash in the morning. 
I can still feel the cold ground on my bare feet, and I would just hope that the door wouldn't make anybody wouldn't make any noise and wake anybody up. The same year, a neighbor started abusing me. Looking back, I think my father may have known or even set it up. But at this point, I'm not sure that it matters or if I'll ever know for sure. The neighbor had this big red van and he was always taking us somewhere on the weekends and we were at this little park. I was collecting little tadpoles and having so much fun. It was beautiful outside. He called me over to the van and took off my shorts and he raped me in the back of the van on the beanbags. I can remember looking out the window and seeing the beautiful sky and this huge tree, big beautiful tree swinging in the breeze and I couldn't understand why this was happening on such a beautiful day. He was done. He told me to get dressed and he just left. I put my clothes on and went back to the table to get my bucket of tadpoles and he kicked them over and started stepping on them, saying that next time I wouldn't fight. My entire life I felt guilty that I couldn't pick them up fast enough, that I couldn't save them. I didn't care about me, but I couldn't save those tadpoles. He was, when I think about it, he was in his early 20s and I was five. How much could I have really fought him? Finally, when I myself was in my early 20s, I pressed charges on my father. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, but at least it kept his stepdaughter safe. He took a plea bargain but still couldn't follow the rules, so he spent almost a year in jail. Not near enough for all that he did to me, but I didn't do it for me. I just did it to keep others safe. I'm trying not to let my past define me. Some days I lose, but I'm winning more days than ever. And soon I will be okay. I'll find my way out of this and be the person that I was meant to be. There is a difference between the general public term of pedophilia and the professional definition. The public usually associates pedophilia with someone who is sexually attracted to a human being below the legal age of the majority. However, the clinical term specifies the definition as sexual preference for children, usually of pre-pubertal or early pubertal age and that for six months or more that person has acted on these urges or suffers from distress as a result of having these feelings. The individual must also be at least 16 years of age and at least five years older than the juvenile involved to meet criteria for pedophilia. Pedophiles can be divided into two main categories, exclusive pedophiles and non-exclusive pedophiles. Exclusive pedophiles are only attracted to children and non-exclusive pedophiles are attracted to children and adults. Exclusive pedophiles are sometimes referred to as true pedophiles. They are only attracted to children. Pedophiles are usually attracted to a particular age range. If the child is younger than four years, it is called infantophilia usually zero to three years on average. If the child is prepubertal or early pubertal, it is called pedophilia, 13 and younger on average. If the child is adolescent, it is called hebophilia, roughly 12 to 16 years. Even though there are differences between the sexual attraction to minors, only one term is mainly used by the media, the word pedophilia. Professionally, there's a more difference between an active pedophile or an active offending pedophile and a non-offender. Uh, a pedophile who has sexual feelings for children, but who doesn't engage in sexual activities with children because he knows or she knows it's wrong. Why do I think I'm a pedophile? Well, I don't think uh, it's really a choice because uh, I think you are born like that. But uh, on the other, other hand, I think a lot of people have those feelings and they uh, don't accept them, they suppress them. 
uh, firstly, I don't see myself as 100% pedophile. I also like people who are uh, above 80 years old. And I think that sexuality of uh, every human uh, is a mix. Well, I'm uh, a non-offending uh, offending pedophile. And the difference between offending and non-offending is obvious. Um, people who are offending, they are uh, breaking the law. Uh, well, about uh, child pornography, you have uh, virt virtual child pornography, manga, uh, and so on. And sometimes I think uh, that's attractive. And that's. Uh, and it's not illegal uh, drawings, but real child, child pornography is illegal and I'm not watching that. As what I'm about to share with you is startling. A Delaware pediatrician is accused of molesting his own patients. Children, right there in his office. Dr. Earl Bradley is accused of molesting, in fact, more than a hundred children in his office, some as young as three months old. He possibly is the, the nation's worst uh, sex offender, sex molester uh, in the history. That's according to documents. When you look at some of the numbers here, here's this picture. Just take a look at this guy. Um, just that everything has to be consensual. Um, no coercion. Uh... Children cannot be consensual. Do you understand it? Personally, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I, I wouldn't go all the way to sex. How can a three-year-old be consensual? Tell me that. There is a difference between a pedophile who is attracted to 13-year-olds and a pedophile who is attracted to babies. Pedophiles who are attracted to babies are called infantophiles. Infantophilia is a subcategory of pedophilia. Infantophiles are usually attracted to infants aged 0 to 3. Infantophilia is the most extreme form of pedophilia. Very little is known about them because they are a minority amongst pedophiles. Um, I don't think I'm a pedophile. I know I am. Whenever I see young children, gender is irrelevant, especially in vulnerable situations, I feel more emotional and physically feel harder. I want to get intimate with them. I want to know them on a personal level. I want them. Uh, it has really taken any kind of love out of my life. I can't be with the people that I love. However, I'm happily married to a man. Uh, there's no passion in a marriage, but we do share a special bond. It's like being best friends, but closer. So being a pedophile is not to say that I cannot have a proper relationship with an adult, but what saddens me is that I cannot imagine myself ever having kids of my own. Oh, I used to spend a lot of time sitting at the playground or in the bleachers at the pool and just watch children. Eventually, I asked myself, do I really want to do this to the rest of my life? The answer was obvious. I had to find something else to occupy my time. And that is when I took up cooking. Whenever I feel an urge coming, I cook. My husband loves my food, so there is always somewhere to dump my urges away. He is a huge source of support to me. I am also a head chief at a popular restaurant. Every last Tuesday of the month, we have a make-your-own pizza night, and there is always a large amount of kids that come. That is the day that I look forward to the most each month. For me personally, I feel that my life is not much different from other adults, apart from the fact that I cannot love another person my age. I am able to control my urges by cooking. 
Those who cook well have lots of friends, and many of my friends have children. I invite them over for dinner all the time. I know it's, it's customary for guests to bring something like a bottle of wine, but I tell my guests not to. Unknowingly, what they are bringing are their kids. I feed them good food. They bring their kids to play. It's a fair treat to me. Have I ever been in a relationship with a minor as an adult? Um, relationship? No, but I do have a story. This was several years ago. A friend brought her daughter over for lunch. In the middle of our meal, her daughter started bleeding, so she ran to her car to get some napkins while I took the girl to the bathroom. There I took off her skirt and her panties. Then I quickly took some towels and started wiping up. Eventually, I summed up the courage to put my finger in, saying, this will help you stop the bleeding. She nodded her head and I screamed around. I heard footsteps nearing behind me, so I took my finger out and continued wiping. My friend stood in the doorway and said, sorry for the mess. Oh, no problem, no problem at all. So a new school year begins and your teenager comes home talking about how much he likes one of his teachers. Your first thought might be good. I hope he learned something. But the parents of one 14-year-old in Florida were not happy about what their son was learning from a teacher in his school. Her name was Deborah Lefebvre, and she's one in a string of young female teachers who've admitted having sex with underage male students. I don't believe that female pedophiles exist because um, women have a less uh, aggressive sex drive. Does society treat this differently? I mean, if this was a man doing this to a boy or a man doing this to a, a girl, um, would it be thought of in the same way? I mean, would the word relationship even be used? That's right. I mean, sometimes I get confused. You know, is it a crime story? Is it a love story? Or was it a, was it consensual? Was it a rape? You know, all of that seems to be, you know, fodder for, for discussion. We really don't know. I think female pedophiles exist because you have the classic stories of uh, high school teachers that are having an affair with boy students. 39-year-old Ann Knopf denied allegations that she had sex with her daughter's ex in the basement of her home while her husband and children slept upstairs. You, you would have maybe fantasies of you doing it with some hot soccer mom who was way older than you because you know she was fully developed and you'd be like oh yeah I'd hit that. Females are generally not associated with pedophilia in the eyes of modern society. Women are seen as nurturing and caring and would never harm children. If a man hugs a strange child, people would generally think he is a pervert. But if a woman hugs a strange child, people would think she is kind and even nurtures children that are not her own. There is a clear double standard when it comes to pedophilia between men and women. This double standard has allowed many offending female pedophiles to go undetected. Roughly 80% of the victims of female pedophiles are not believed. Furthermore, boys are less likely to report sexual abuse. The media mainly talks about female high school teachers when it comes to female pedophilia. However, high school teachers who have sexual activities with teenagers are not pedophiles. If the child is in puberty, it is called habophilia. This means that most high school teachers who have sex with children are offending habophiles. People who are attracted to adults are called teleophiles. However, sexuality is not bound by boxes. In reality, many categories overlap. Most humans are technically speaking a mix of hebophiles and teleophiles. Teleophiles and hebophiles overlap. There are 18 year olds who look 16 and there are 16 year olds who look 18. Hebophiles and pedophiles also overlap. There are 15 year olds who look like 13 year olds and vice versa. Even teleophiles and pedophiles overlap. There are 15 year olds who look like adults and there are young adults who look like children.
Child pornography is a visual representation of children under the age of 18 engaged in sexual activity, lewd conduct or erotic behavior. Many people believe that pedophiles are the main cause of child pornography, but in reality, pedophiles are not the only ones who use child pornography. Pedophiles are the main consumers of child pornography. Teen sex is the most searched form of sex on the internet, but not all teen sex is legal. That's why child pornography has become a $3 billion industry, three times more than the income of all online social gaming combined. Child pornography is not just creepy basement videos with fat, heavy men. The statistics on child pornography include videos, magazines, cable, pay-per-view, CDs, and the internet. It's also used to promote escort services, sex clubs, merchandise, and phone sex. Approximately 20% of all internet pornography involves children under the age of 18. Seeing that almost all men watch pornography, and one third of women, means that many of us have not only witnessed child pornography, but have also contributed to the industry. For example, sending underage naked pictures of yourself to your partner as a teenager. The only time when it's not considered child pornography is when those images are used by the fashion industry. Because when underage fashion models show their private parts, it's considered artistic. A 14-year-old New Jersey girl has been accused of child pornography after posting nearly 30 explicit nude pictures of herself on MySpace.com. If convicted, those charges could force her to register as a sex offender. I think uh, sexting is about sending uh, uh, pictures of naked people to other people. And uh, I hope heard from a girlfriend of mine uh, that she got a picture also from a guy uh, naked. I think we've completely lost our minds, Mike. We're seeing an epidemic of these cases. There was a case in Pennsylvania of two girls at a slumber party, teenagers in pajama uh, bottoms and bra tops who took pictures of, of each other. They're facing child porn charges. Have we completely lost our minds? I mean, I think that they do it because they think it's funny or to bully somebody. I've got five kids, let me tell you something. We need to protect kids from themselves too. Not just the predators, but from themselves. Then when these photographs go out, they're out for good and they are worldwide available with the push of a button. Who likes that? Let me tell you, who likes that? The predators the and the pornographers. There are more phones than people in the world. Most of us use a mobile service called SMS. SMS stands for short message service. The term sexting is a combination of the word sex and texting and refers to a practice of sending sexually explicit photos electronically, mainly by cell phone. Roughly 20% of teenagers in Western society admit to sexting. That is more than 50 million teenagers in Western society alone. The problem is that all content generated by sexting can be considered child pornography. The teenager does not even have to be naked for it to be considered sexting and child pornography. Because child pornography does not require nudity. Any sexual activity, lewd conduct or erotic behavior, even when fully closed, can be considered child pornography. The average teenager has no clue that they're breaking the law by sexting. But teenagers have been jailed, given probation and even committed suicide because they could not deal with the consequences of sexting. In America, 36% of all sex offenders are children themselves. Some law enforcement are easing the sentences concerning child pornography created by minors. But sexting cannot be fully legalized without rewriting the entire definition of child pornography. That however would allow adult habophiles and pedophiles to abuse the system.
There are studies showing that in pedophilia there are a number of neurobiological differences between pedophiles and uh, The idea is that already when the fetus is in the womb that there are certain hormonal processes that predispose a person uh, to uh, develop uh, pedophilic sexual interests. I think the main cause is uh, as for sexual orientation in general, the interaction between uh, sex hormones and developing brain, which is determined both by genetic factors and environmental factors. On the other hand, there is the view that um, pedophilia is also related to early childhood experiences of being physically abused and or sexually abused. And the idea is that if you are abused as a child, you learn that um, that is a normal way of interacting with adults. So that's like an, an imprint in your mind. Uh, you think that's normal. So that's why that person who has those experiences may develop sexual preferences for children himself or herself uh, and act on those. All researchers agree that true pedophilia is not a conscious choice, just like being homosexual or heterosexual. The main difference of true pedophilia, also known as exclusive pedophilia, starts off with problems in sexual development. Unlike most people who have a normal sexual development into adulthood, a pedophile sexual development is blocked. For example, when they are 13, they prefer 13-year-old children. But when they are 20, they still prefer 13-year-old children. And even when they are older, they will continue to prefer 13-year-old children. There is no cure for pedophilia. You can't change the deviant sexual preference. What you can do is two things. One, you can intervene at the level of the sex drive. So there are pharmacological agents that really decrease the libido of the person. So that means you stop their sexual activity completely also called chemical uh, castration. That's one option, but this type of treatment has many harmful side effects. Uh, you can think about osteoporosis, I mean serious osteoporosis, depression, feminization. So in the long term, this type of treatment is not an option. Uh, the second possibility is uh, psychological treatment. That means you work on uh, the psychological problems that actually make the person act out their pedophilic interests. So you can think about maybe the person has the idea that it's okay uh, to have sex with children, uh, that children um, are not harmed by it, that um, they actually may benefit from it, that it's a kind of sex education. Well, these types of uh, cognitive distortions need to be diminished, need to be reduced in treatment. Also, a lot of pedophiles lack empathy, lack insight into what their behavior does to the children. So I'm talking here, of course, about pedophiles who act on their uh, sexual preference. These types of treatments are necessary and are generally quite effective in reducing the risk of a pedophile, again, abusing children.
I don't think that pedophilia will become accepted because, uh, like I said, the public associate pedophilia with active sexual relationships between adults and children and condemn this. So I don't think it will be accepted. Yes, I think ultimately pedophilia will, will be accepted. Um, maybe it'll take, you know, a hundred more years. Uh, yeah, it's just like homosexuality in the DSM-2 uh, that came out in the 1950s. Homosexuality was, uh, was, yeah, was like listed as a mental disorder. Well, it's not anymore. And I think, yeah, it can happen that uh, we can consider this sexual preference as a natural variation. And of course, we still will need to uh, make sure that a pedophile doesn't act on those sexual preferences. But I think the, the fact that the person has that preference, I think we will arrive uh, at a point in time where that's just a given, considered a given. So, at one hand, I think that pedophilia will never be accepted because it involves damage of children. But we should also remember that um, many of the people who are focusing uh, uh, sexual orientation towards children um, can keep their impulses in such a way that they don't damage children. Pedophilia is an orientation, not an action. We cannot condemn an orientation, but we can condemn an action. Having sex with young children before puberty will never become accepted because it damages children. However, sexual relations between adults and adolescent children might become more accepted by modern society. As strange as this may sound, this future development is not new for Western society. If we look at the past, we can see that Western society treated sexuality completely different. The Greeks and Romans practiced pederasty, and particularly in ancient Greece, it was a very well-known social institution. And that would typically involve a relationship between an older man and a younger boy. However, a younger boy would not mean a real child, as we would understand it. A boy in a homoerotic relationship in ancient Greece would be an adolescent, so in his puberty. So if we would translate this behavior in ancient Greece into modern terms of modern sexuality, we would rather call it habophilia. Habophilia is not listed as a mental disorder because finding teenagers attractive is normal. Children before puberty cannot understand lust, but children in puberty can. However, we must remember that teenagers are still in sexual development. The larger the age difference between adults and teenagers, the more chance there is for an imbalance of power. Sex should always be consensual, no matter what age. For most of us, the age of attraction does not change. Instead, it expands. This means that the very first people who we find attractive will remain in our age of attraction. Usually this begins in early puberty. When we pass the age of 18, we do not automatically remove children under the age of 18 from our age of attraction. We are not automatically programmed to adjust our age of attraction to fit the legal age of the majority.
because 18 is just a number. <laughs>